Welcome everybody to our webinar tonight. Hi, Sheila. Oh, you're on mute. <laughs> Hello, Blake. Thanks for hey, having now, me. Yeah, it's good to have you. Um, our webinar tonight is uh, about growing your practice using AI. If this is your first time um, joining a My Social Practice webinar, my name is Blake Hadley. I'm one of the founders and president of My Social Practice. Uh, we're a digital marketing agency specifically working with dental practices. So we've been doing that for about, it's been about 13 years now. So, and then I have with me uh, Sheila Roth. Sheila's from Pearl, one of the foremost leading um, companies when it comes to dental clinical AI, which is really cool. Um, we've been working with Pearl for a little while. We actually, uh, Mike Buckner, who works with Pearl, he spoke at our dental digital marketing conference earlier this year, which was awesome. And uh, we've just always been amazed by what Pearl is doing. Every time you guys speak, I'm always, my eyes are open to the future of what is happening in this world and especially in the dental industry. So uh, we're excited to have you here with us. Thank you. All right, so let me just kind of uh, break down how tonight is going to go. I'm going to share my screen again. We're going to start uh, by hearing from Sheila, and she's going to take about 25 to 30 minutes and talk about how um, improving, how to improve your clinical dentistry using AI. And then I'm going to speak the next 25 minutes about improving your practice's online presence using AI and how it's changing content creation from the marketing perspective. And then at the end, we'll spend about 10 minutes having some Q&A. So if you have any questions throughout our presentations, feel free to use the chat function of Zoom, uh, chat in your questions or use the Q&A section and we will, I'll be watching it and we will either stop and address your question or we'll address it at the end of the presentation. Um, also, I wanted to show this screen because if you, for some reason you have to drop off the webinar, um, I wanted to make sure you had our information and if you were interested in our services. Uh, this first QR code is to get a live demo from Pearl so you can understand their technology a little bit better. And the second QR code is from my social practice. It's for a free lunch and learn. Uh, we'll buy your team lunch up to five people and um, we'll give you a custom marketing consultation if you fill out that form um, on the right. So feel free to scan either one of these and I'll show these a couple more times during our presentation. Now, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. I'm gonna introduce Sheila and then we'll turn the time over to her. So Sheila is the Director of Clinical Operations at Pearl. Uh, she is a veteran uh, dental practice management expert, thought leader and public speaker. As Director of Clinical Operations for the dental AI company Pearl, Sheila built a, and continues to lead a team responsible for practice change management and clinical performance. Previously, Sheila founded and led the practice management consultancy Absolute Dental Business Solutions. She earned her BS and RDH from Loma Linda University. So Sheila, as I mentioned, we're so excited to have you um, and we'll just turn the time over to you. All right. Well, thank you, Blake. And thank you, everybody who's joining us. I'm honored to be here. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and make sure we can dive right in. Okay. So today I'm really honored and excited to be here to discuss really AI, as well as my number one passion in dentistry, which is kind of aligning with providers and empowering dental growth. We all know that growth is not easy, but it is very fun and very rewarding. So um, a little bit about me, the last practice that I left to come to Pearl um, was kind of my family. Uh, my goal was to really try to accommodate 25,000 patients. That was the number of patients in that city that we worked in. And we got to about 15,000 active patients. In theory, we ran out of operatories. So this is one of my passions. It's just to grow and practices and be able to serve more patients. Um, had I had AI, I probably could have convinced my doctors to build out more operatories um, and come closer to that 25,000. So today we're really excited to be here with Blake as well. 
and really share with you how AI is taking our practices and our marketing to the next level for us. So we have a bifurcated approach here because we're always thinking about how do we get more new patients, but also how do we get our returning patients who love us and trusted back into our practice. And Blake will share a little bit more with you today about how to have that happen in your practice. So all the magic you guys are working on day in and day out, we're going to talk about how we can use AI and my social practice to really take that to the next level. I think we should start with um, really kind of let's look back in history with the technology of AI. And we look at the history of dental innovations and we look back, we really see the key developments that have really put dentistry on the map. They've driven growth for the dental industry really since the mid 19th century. We can see there's braces and you know the drills and toothpaste really, right? And now we have x-rays. Um, that's a very transformative paradigm in the shift of technology. So now we see the newest paradigm shift and that is AI the innovation of AI. So let's talk about what AI is. There's a lot of information in the media about AI, right? When I first came to Pearl, I thought, oh, I'm gonna work on AI. I saw Tiger Woods has this amazing technology. He can do like this AI golf swing and that didn't work for me. I'm still terrible at golf. So we're gonna talk about what AI is and what AI isn't and how it can really start taking your practice to that next level. So when we talk about what most people think of AI and what it looks like, we think about things like the Terminator, right? And this um, very kind of scary AI. We hear discussions, both good and bad, from not only Elon Musk, but the ADA is finally backing us, which is nice. So we think about AI being the Terminator and highly intelligent, human-like, threatening, maybe even taking our jobs or taking our our lives, right, in theory. This is really not the AI that we are referring to. In fact, we're looking more on how AI is going to help us save time and actually bring more humanity back into our practices. We know that your patients come in because they love you. And that's what we're gonna talk about today is how we can really just get them back in the practice. So AI that we're gonna be discussing today is not going to be a threatening AI, we're talking about less general and more kind of narrow-minded AI and what AI really looks like. Um, I was excited to talk about AI because there's a lot of information about, like I was saying earlier, how we can really have AI do the mundane tasks so that we can spend that one-on-one -on -one time with our patients. So today we're talking a little bit more about AI in a narrow-minded version. This is the AI that beats the grandmasters in the chess starting back 10 to 15 years ago. When we talk about AI, we're not talking about cybernetic, human-like general intelligence. We're talking more about narrow, specific intelligence. Nonetheless, impressive, but this is the AI that's going to be the future of dentistry. So AI is defined by a computer system that can simulate the problem solving and decision making capabilities of the human mind. When we talk about narrow minded, what that means is AI can solve a problem like humans, right? Whether I'm looking through charts so that I don't have to have the front office do that anymore, or whether, you know, I'm telling Siri that I need it to remind me to buy more chicken at the store. Machine learning is a subset of AI, and that uses computer systems algorithms, and we learn by training on a large amount of data. So this is a subset of artificial intelligence um, that is applied to the computer systems. So this is really the basic definition of AI, and it's really just repetitive training over and over. The interesting thing is AI is like us, right? We have to teach AI just like we have to teach babies. So AI learns like a baby. Um, the baby comes out exposed to the world and it doesn't know, for example, what a dog is until we tell it, oh, look at the doggy. Oh, that's a doggy. Isn't that a cute dog? And then it, the baby makes that connection that, oh, that must be a dog. 
that's very similar to how AI learns. And that's important for us to realize that we're teaching the AI every day and making it better and better. This is what machine learning does today. So today we see lots of systems becoming quite advanced. Soon Blink is going to wow us with all of the how AI is improving marketing and what chat GPT will do. In fact, we will see here that chat GPT wrote this haiku. It may not be the best, but it is faster and it's actually more consistent. It's very impressive when you think about that. So that's what AI is doing. It's solving basic daily tasks that humans can do. That doesn't mean we don't need humans. And AI is in our lives so often, we don't even think about how many times we're actually using AI. Even if you've never thought about AI and how it's some sort of foreign concept, um, think about the Tesla, right? It will, when you're driving along, it'll identify street signs. Um, when you get an alert on your phone, like I did last week, that talks about fraud, you know, hey, your your card was charged um, X amount of dollars. That happened to me with my ATM card. I wasn't thrilled, but I was thankful that they alerted me so I could shut my account. Um, what about navigation? I'm going to date myself here, but those of you that used to drive around with a Thomas guide, I know that's probably none of you, but that was way more dangerous than texting, in my opinion. So we're talking about how AI has really solved these basic processes that we're working through every day. And just to let you know, it's been here a long time, right? Siri, um, when you go to the um, airport, you can see that face recognition. That is all AI. When we turn on our phones much faster by using AI. When I have to put my passcode in of a hat on or something, um, I'm annoyed, right? Because I need AI to help me be more efficient and more effective. Um, so supporting, it's supporting us and it's making our lives easier. So um, in my opinion, AI is a huge um, change and the way that dentistry is going, it's going to be a, um, a utility in the near future. So just to summarize, this is not a threatening AI. This is not the Terminator. Um, in fact, it's something we're going to be re relying on in the very new future in dentistry if we have not begun relying upon it already. So like I was saying before, you know, it will be an essential utility, utility excuse me, in every practice. Um, when I used to work in my practice, I would come in, it's the first one there, I would turn on air, water, lights, I think it was, suction, and I think eventually we'll just add AI to that list. Um, even the short time I've been here with um, Pearl over the last two years, when I go back and visit my own practice on the weekends, it's very strange for me to look at radiographs without the AI features. One day we're going to look back and remember, remember looking at x-rays without AI. So um, we're excited to share with you a little bit more about how AI is really going to be a huge change in dentistry. So this fascinating concept of AI will become less of a buzzword in the next five to 10 years. I think it will become more of an everyday utility that we see and that we rely upon. And I see that happening much faster than I even anticipated. AI is already here and it's solving a set of problems that are already very real for us. As you can see why AI is so important, it's the difference here between night and day. When we look at a baseline for the standard of care in dental diagnostics, AI is here to take us to the next level. Um, X-rays are the diagnostic standard, diagnostic standard of care, followed by intraoral exams and such. But when we have a system that can read dental radiographs with the accuracy, the speed, and the precision, precision capability of all that will exceed the human abilities, unfortunately, uh, we will see that we are better together. You end up with a higher standard of care across your practice probably an increased retention if you're working with associates and such because we have that ability to calibrate our diagnosis. You also have this valuable tool that turns from the dentist to the patients and they can now understand and take their understanding of their dental needs to that whole new level, really saving teeth, right? One at a time, because if they get that DO instead of that crown or that crown instead of that root canal, 
then really we sleep better at night as clinicians and we're doing a better service for our community. The capabilities that exist in AI are extensive and they really span across all specialties. It's exciting to see where AI is gonna go. We know it's in medicine. We've seen it in mammograms and cancer detection. And the fact that it's in dentistry is a huge blessing to all of us. We can see um, radiographic needs from um, a restorative and endodontic perspective, orthodontic malocclusion, um, periodontics from a hygiene perspective. And we're really able to use computer vision um, for AI radiographic capabilities that we have not had in the past. This allows dentists to perform more consistently and more accurately in our x-ray analysis. This also allows our hygiene and assistant team to be able to look at these different pathologies, um, raise their standard of care in their own minds to the next level. So that's been really exciting for dentistry. In the case of Pearl, our FDA clinical trials show that the dentist using AI detections have detected 37% more disease. We're talking about more accurate disease detection here. We're not talking about detecting more treatment in dentistry. That is not the goal here. But the study actually says that dentists without AI are potentially missing more dentistry. We all know about diagnosis fatigue, uh, running from you know anesthetizing a patient, running over and doing a quick exam, and you know none of us are perfect. Humans are not perfect. In fact, AI is not quite perfect yet. Uh, but we are better together. And so we remember that having these additional tools in the practice brings our standard of care to the next level. I remember when we brought the intraoral camera in and how that was so insightful in dentistry. And now we have the ability to have AI in radiographs and it's taking our profession to that next level. We all know that uh, we can have a bad day, right? And the AI does not have bad days because it's consistent. And that's the nice thing about it. So it's also going to remind us of things in the treatment plan that perhaps we didn't plan that day. So it's a whole different level operating behind the scenes. We have more consistent diagnosis, more dentistry found earlier, saving more teeth. And we all know that happier returning patients are a great source of referral, which is the most organic form of marketing you could actually have. And that ultimately gives rise to more revenue in the practice and more revenue for the staff. So everybody wins when the patients are getting what they need. That's the most important part here is that the patients are getting what they need. There's better detection and really more importantly, in my opinion, is there's better understanding of dentistry. The AI systems of today are making dentistry better across the board. They save us time as clinicians and they're allowing us to actually spend that one-on-one -on -one time that is lacking in the dental and medical field because of all the concerns that we're always battling with on a daily basis. We're trying to see more patients at a time. And sometimes we miss that human connection, right? We go in and we look at an x-ray and we're like, you're gonna lose a tooth. Okay, see you later, Bob. And that's catastrophic for Bob. So giving us back time with using AI is a huge win for everybody. In clinical care, Using AI allows for the delivery of a more consistent diagnosis. You know, it's always going to say this is a cavity or this is a potential pathology on 12DO. It's going to say it every day, every time, over and over. And because we know that the AI can actually see 500 to 700 shades of gray, we can actually detect clinical decay earlier with AI. The human eye can see about 50 to 70 shades of gray. So that's a very, very big difference there. So the AI allows practices to deliver, to deliver more consistent diagnosis, right? Consistency is huge in dentistry, um, an objective diagnosis. And this is most important in our field, especially when patients go to different doctors and different dentists and they get a different diagnosis. This undermines a lot of trust in our profession that we as clinicians still struggle with, even this day, that we have to overcome in our field. Again, dating myself back in the Reader's Digest article, right, where one person went to 10 different doctors and got 10 different, you know, opinions. 
And in my own practice, working with my doctors, we loved second opinions um, before AI existed because in my practice, they, the doctors were extremely ethical. So every time we got a second opinion, we knew we were going to get a new patient. The nice thing is with AI, you have this objective in-house. You have a built-in second opinion. It's very valuable and a huge growth driver for the patient understanding and most importantly, the patient retention. We know how valuable a retained patient is, not only in their ability to consistently get their treatment done here, but what about their family and friends that they refer? As we know that speed and efficiency is key in any dental practice, this tool makes patient exams much more efficient. It identifies and highlights pathologies, <coughs> excuse me, and makes the diagnosis faster. Sometimes we've heard from different doctors about, uh, I was gonna watch that, but I noticed is much further than I thought according to that disease breakdown. Um, and some earlier clinicians that have reported that it made me feel a little more confident to be able to move that dentistry that I've been watching to the next level. So again, that calibration of diagnosis um, can just not be underrated in, underrated in dentistry. This is an excellent tool for all clinicians in the practice, right? As hygienists, we spend a lot of time with our patients. I think we get more time than most healthcare professions. And we, you know, most people, I don't go to the doctor twice a year, thankfully, not yet. But hygienists, um, you guys see your patients a lot. So being able to take the um, standard of care to that next level is a whole new way to look at dentistry and um, empowering your hygienist to be able to be um, advocates for their patients makes your exams much faster as well. <clears throat> this is my favorite part. So I work a lot with my old um, practice where we used to work a lot on case presentation. And I would say that um, the most consistent feedback we've heard from patients that move from the back office to the front office is, I don't really know. I think I can wait on that. The, the doctor said, I think he could wait. And remembering that patients want to come to the dentist. They want to know that everything looks great and walk out the door. And us as clinicians, we don't want to tell them the bad news, right? Imagine you're losing a tooth or you need a root canal. Um, that's not a fun conversation. So as important as accuracy and speed and consistency in the diagnosis, the AI is bringing a whole new lens to the patient, which is the most important part of the practice, right? So they can see now what's going on in their mouth. You have AI providing um, the ability for patients to see the tooth parts map. You have them able to see disease breakdown. You have segmented lesions, those pink areas that are gonna pop up and share with them, whether they're incipient or advanced lesions. It's gonna show how that decay is encroaching into the next part of the tooth. And it helps have that lateral discussion with the patient because now they're part of that case presentation and that decision-making process. We're also able to detect you know, bone levels down to the measurements of a hundredth of a millimeter. This is really, really important um, for the hygienist and bone level measurements. So, so these highly visual um, tools that we have with labels and color, it makes diagnosing very clear and quantitative. And that data is really important to an increasing data-driven public world that we're living in. So this takes case acceptance to an entirely new level. The clinical tool is the flagship of dental AI. It's the chair side case presentation tool that really brings the growth to your practice. It's the core, the heartbeat of what AI and dentistry is doing. And it's amazing challenge that companies like Pearl have overcome. It's amazing to see how we can take case presentation to that next level and have patients, you know, really move from watching to scheduling their dentistry before they leave for the day. We've done a lot of studies to see the case acceptance um, and how it's different when we talk about um, case presentations with AI. I'm sure you all saw your case presentations increase when we incorporated an intraoral camera. 
And there's a lot of interproximal lesions that are occurring that we can't share with an intraoral camera. So we can see a huge um, treatment acceptance increase. And again, earlier is the key here in root canals, fillings, scaling and root planings, crowns, implants, and just um, restorative replacements. So this is really, like I said, been a game changer for dentistry in general. Practice management is um, kind of my favorite area. We know that we can use computers and they do incredible things for us. Their, their ability to ingest large amounts of data very quickly um, is something humans cannot do. Imagine if I asked you to go back and do a chart audit for all of your patients that have um, periapical radiolucencies, if you will, or calculus, or even cavities, right? Um, we can run reports on that. But what about the patients that their treatment isn't in the treatment plan yet? So you would tell me, uh, yeah, I don't have time for that this, this day or ever this year. We can use AI to help us do these kinds of things. It can apply the clinical intelligence to see a cavity or a periapical radiolucency or calculus. We can cross-reference patient data in our PMS. We can compare treatment plans, notes, appointment statuses, and we're able to now use AI to tell us if this treatment has actually been planned, scheduled, or completed. We can now take those clinical insights and have AI also take a complete historical analysis and review the past images. They can come up with powerful insights that can guide us throughout the day for daily growth in our dental practice. Maybe it's adding more same day dentistry and offering that convenience to your patients that's in your hygiene chair, or just ensuring that your patients that are on your schedule that have outstanding dentistry are really stopping at the front making sure they're not walking out the door unless they have their next appointment. So we're seeing that practices that have integrated their practice management system with our um, practice intelligence feature have been really kind of the forefront leaders in growth management here. We offer an entire series of tools that within the practice intelligence feature will actually affect the outcome of your practice on day one. There are a number of key areas in the practice, scheduling and chair time, referrals, staffing and procurement, recall and marketing. Marketing is really what we're talking about today. And Blake's gonna come on and teach us how to take all of this and move that directly into the best marketing plan for your team. The nice thing with AI is you can actually for the first time ever, you can evaluate your entire patient population. Let's say we were thinking about buying a CBCT or maybe bringing in a specialist. Well, we can run a report from an AI perspective, how many outstanding unscheduled and predicted treatments that are actually not even in the treatment plan that would actually support that purchase, right? So we take the guesswork out of budgeting and practice growth, um, also, those of you that have specialists in your practice, you could use these analytics to decide, do I want to include an additional specialist? Do I want to take some courses myself and start doing endo? That's an exhausting procedure, right? I love endodontists. I wanted to be an endodontist when I first started, but I realized like, I don't know if I have the patience for that. So the ability to use AI to justify bringing in additional tools or skills or staffing is something we've never really had in dentistry. So that is a big change for us moving forward for the growth and the protection of our investments. So with our practice intelligence schedule and with a lot of AI, we have a daily enhanced schedule that will actually color code your day based on treatment opportunities. I remember in my practice, we spent so much time talking about um, patients that are, you know, what's going on with tomorrow? and preparing for tomorrow and what's going on with yesterday and recovering from yesterday. But really AI allows us to focus on what we really only have guaranteed, which is what's happening today. So there's a lot of tools here for daily chart audits, highlighting patients that need x-rays. You no longer have to do that anymore. AI is here to take those mundane tasks from you. Um, we're also highlighting all of your outstanding treatment needs per provider. This is a very specific map that allows you to give more 
alerts, if you will, to same day dentistry, giving the front office a heads up, giving your hygienist and your doctors a heads up. And that's really serving more patients. Our treatment infused recall lists are tools that really ensure we bring the best, most clinical patients back into your chair in a timely manner. We have specialist referrals that instantly send those reports to your specialists, as well as allow you to manage and recover the restorative aspect of those referrals that you've sent out in one area. So this is just a few areas that you can see AI is going to really improve the growth of your practice on day one. No more chart audits. No more worrying about the front desk worried about, wait, what? We're doing what today for same day dentistry? I remember I would just uh, move forward. My doctor say yes. I would tell the front desk, we'd use these little earpieces. I'd numb the patient and we'd be ready to prep that tooth um, within the next half hour. And that also having these opportunities at your fingertips will uh, protect your practice from cancellations and ensure you're always focusing on um, being very growth minded. Again, back to the impact of AI, both with specialists as well as basic dentistry here. When we incorporate AI, we can see a major increase in growth in our patients served and ultimately in the um, revenue of the practice. AI empowers dental practices to do more dentistry more easily. And also, it also maintains the growth with smarter marketing. It's enabling practices to grow and we need marketing to improve our patient flow for both new and returning patients. We can use AI to market more effectively with greater results, as well as market that, that you use AI, right? 87% of patients want to come to a practice that uses the latest technology. That was an interesting statistic. So in marketing, there's three things we really want to accomplish. The keys to marketing success we always look at is marketing to the right person at, with the right message at the right time. AI enables us to identify audience segments that represent the greatest opportunity to us. You know, I may be sending out 30,000 mailers to potential customers, which is what we used to do in my old practice. Um, we were talking about the cost of that, and it is a, a pretty big cost. And mailers, you know, whether you decide to do that or not is a whole different story. But remember, I'm just blanket mailing, right? In theory, I'm throwing a bunch of stuff at the wall and hoping that that will stick, which is a really inefficient way of marketing. We know that we have to do that to acquire more new patients. However, we now have a much more strategic approach and have the opportunity in our practice to be able to recall the patients that love you and also target market those areas. So here's one example of the patients that have scaling and root planning needs. We can see the AIs detecting a specific amount. We can see how many of our treatment plan. But I click on my view now and I have almost $700,000 worth of dentistry and I could do a target marketing for those patients. So this is the difference with AI marketing. And we're using the practice intelligence software. Um, when we turn it on on day one, we generally find over a million dollars of unmet dentistry opportunities that may have been missed. That exists within the existing population before you ever add the benefits of marketing for your new and returning patients. So this is the whole point of how do we just get these patients back in the door because there's unlimited opportunities. We target this type of patients by using a, a way to generate an audience list. So we can send a blast that says, hey, there's a free cleaning or free whitening. You can do blog posts, you can do emails, you can do targeted marketing with um, different zip codes, maybe a 15% off of treatment, et cetera. But these messages may not speak to the specific patient. Like the patient receives it, I just had a cleaning, my teeth are white, I don't need anything. Um, AI lets us market to the right people and lets us identify the audience that actually needs the treatment we want to target. So our list will show you guys how to be able to find your practice within your practice, the unscheduled or AI detected needs, and we're able to provide a very quick list that will generate more ROI for your investment. AI will allow you to create a more targeted offer 
and will limit your costs involved in marketing. You can see all kinds of different ways to move into your targeted marketing and allow your team to um, focus on patients that need to be brought back into your practice. So over and over, we can talk about all the different features, implants, right? We can actually focus on our entire list of patients that may have edentulous regions or possibly hopeless teeth with multiple areas of pathology. Um, now we have a targeted audience, right? Maybe we wanna reach out to how they can chew better, whatever the case may be. Uh, we may not offer 50% off of fillings, but we could send out a generic marketing campaign to a more targeted area that has distinct clinical concerns, right? We're talking about marketing approach to a specific audience, emails, blog posts, and Blake will get into that in a minute about how you can have their team help you with this. I always talk about amazing practices and how marketing just kind of adds that, that fuel to the fire, if you will. So in our opportunity funnels, you can download emails, um, you can create that marketing list, and you'll be able to target marketing, the right message to the right group. This drives an en enormous efficiency of your marketing that dentistry has not been able to accomplish in the past. And I'll finish with this. The AI enables the clinical intelligence to filter down into the business end of the practice management system. It enables us to continue to grow by getting new and returning patients back in our chair. You know, how do we have the bandwidth to create content? That's a good question. Today, thanks to AI and things that have changed, you can now reach an audience at a specific messaging and very quickly. And that's what Blake's gonna share with us today. We are all set, Blake, for you to take it away. Okay, thank you so much for that wonderful presentation, Sheila. Um, let me share my screen here. And uh, Sheila, we, we have some questions that have come through the Q&A section there. Um, maybe you can just kind of look at those. Those are specific uh, to you. And then we can address those at the end and just so to make sure we have enough time uh, for all the content today. So, um, well, thank you. Uh, that such great information there. I'm gonna share this screen again, if you'd like a live demo of Pearl, um, their services and their product, you can scan that QR code here on the left and then as well our QR code for to learn more about our services here on the right. One thing we have worked specifically with Pearl to create a marketing kit for everybody that uses Pearl, the clients of Pearl, so that they can communicate the benefits and value propositions to their patients or potential patients with social media graphics, templates for their blog, templates for emails, uh, stories, uh, story graphics for their social media. And so it's a whole kind of 30 day marketing kit. And if you'd like, if you already use Pearl and you want to download this, you can scan the QR code, or if you just kind of want to understand uh, what type of messaging could potentially go out to your patients about this to help them to understand what you're doing, uh, you can also download the kit as well. So I want to talk a little bit about generative AI. You know, Sheila explained about machine learning and AI and <clears throat> how it's been around for a long time and we really use it every single day. Generative AI has really become popular within the last couple of years, kind of, kind of since people have heard of ChatGPT, which uses generative AI. Um, it's kind of become more mainstream. People have hear that term more often. Uh, the definition of this is artificial intelligence technology that can produce various types of content, including text, imagery, audio, code, or data based on prompts. And it's almost immediate. You can put in a prompt into these different uh, programs and immediately receive an answer, immediately re receive content back. And the really cool thing about it is that it uses algorithms and what we call large language modules, which is what ChatGPT is. It's a large language module to mimic human creativity. So not only is it just producing a result, it's actually because it has so much data in it and it understands tones, it understands 
um, you know, different ways that people talk and different ways people come up with ideas, it's actually able to mimic a little bit of creativity, actually quite a bit of creativity. It's pretty incredible um, what it's able to do now. So the way that this benefits us as marketers, either as an agency or you, if you're marketing your practice, is it really helps make things easier. I love how Sheila said, AI doesn't have a bad day, right? Sometimes as, as a creative in the ad agency world, sometimes my brain just isn't working, right? I, I kind of just hit a wall and I can't think of anything creative that day. Well, AI really helps us with those struggles to come up with ideas and give us content to, to brainstorm. You know, some of the struggles that we have is that we don't have enough time to think of ideas and, and to generate content. Maybe you just don't enjoy it. You know, I, I haven't spoke with many dentists that really love to write, for example. You have just so much going on. And by the end of your day, you know, you probably don't feel like writing a blog post, for example. Um, it's difficult to come up with creative ideas, like I mentioned, or you lack the resources. Maybe you don't have an in-house copywriter or a graphic designer to help you with these things or a social media manager to respond to comments or reviews, right? It's just, it's hard to get to all of these things. So AI really makes it easier. And I, and I want to go through a few different ways that you can generate content using uh, primarily chat GPT, but I'll ex explain a couple other programs you can use as well. So first I wanna talk about blog posts and website content. You know, we recommend to every dental practice that you should have a website, of course, and you should have a blog on your website. And the reason why you should have a blog on your website is because Google, they go out and they search websites that are up to date, that are continually creating new information. And Google favors those types of websites. So there's really a good, better, and best way to write blog posts. A good uh, solution is to simply hire an agency to just post on your blog. Now, this is good because at least it's showing that your website is active, that you're getting new posts. But the problem is, is sometimes you, you hire an agency and the content on your blog is the exact same content as on everybody else's blog, right? They just kind of copy and paste that information. It's still good because you can, it's good information that you can share on your social media accounts and you can push out there but it's not the best when it comes to search engine optimization. So a better solution for blog content or website content is to customize it a little bit. Put the name of your dentist in there, put the name of your city in there, add some keywords to some, um, the services that you provide or the services you wanna focus on. You can customize that kind of generic content to make it a little more your own, all right? So that's a better solution and, and agencies can do that for you as well. The best solution for blog content and website content is, of course, to write completely custom content. You know, interview a team member, ask them what the, you know, what are the benefits of um, dental implants or whatever it might be, whatever the blog post is about. Maybe put a little video in there, write a quote from your doctor, just completely custom written content. Like I mentioned, the problem with that is in the last 13 years I've been doing this, there's probably a handful of dentists that, that will actually do that. So most dentists are okay with this kind of better solution, right? A little bit custom. It's still helping me on my SEO. Um, it's still generating content, but I don't have to sit down and write a blog post. Well, the really cool thing about today is that we've kind of bridged the gap between better and best. Now there is a way that you can easily write custom blog content that will work for uh, helping you rank higher in Google. And I'm sure many of you, most of you probably have heard of ChatGPT. Uh, this is incredible technology that uses AI, um, just a definition, it's a sophisticated chatbot trained by AI that can generate human-like text based on a given prompt. Now, some of you have maybe messed with ChatGPT of creating an account. It's free for the kind of intro um, version of it. You can pay for um, a little bit more functionality, but it's free and you can go create a, an account today. Um, I'm going to show you how you can use ChatGPT to create a blog post. So I went to ChatGPT and I simply wrote this prompt. I said, write me a blog post written by Dr. Linda Borna, DDS from Borna Family Dental about the benefits of dental implants. 
include that her practice is located in Claremont, California, and that they offer comprehensive dentistry for patients of all ages and degrees of oral health. Okay, fairly simple prompt. Within seconds, it wrote a complete blog post for me. Um, you know, at the top it says, are you, um, are you self-conscious about your smile? Do you have trouble eating certain foods or speak clearly? If so, dental implants may be the solution you've been looking for. As a dentist with years of experience in Claremont, California, I've seen firsthand the benefits that dental implants can provide for my patients. Not only do they improve the appearance of your smile, but they also improve your overall oral health and quality of life. It continues to give all the benefits of dental implants, um, and the very end, it actually includes a call to action. It says at Born and Family Dental, we offer comprehensive dentistry for patients of all ages and degrees of oral health. Our team of ex experienced professionals is committed to helping you achieve a healthy and beautiful smile. If you're interested in learning more about dental implants, please don't hesitate to contact us. We'd be happy to schedule a consultation and discuss your options. Now, I went in and I said, well, give me five different titles for this blog, blog post. Within seconds, it gave me five different ways that I can title this post. The benefits of dental implants, improving your smile and your life. Dental implants, a solution to missing teeth and self-conscious smiles. From appearance to oral health, the multiple benefits of dental implants. Secure and natural, why dental implants are the future of tooth replacement. Born a family dental, Claremont's ex experts on dental implants and comprehensive dentistry. Then I said, make these titles a little more fun. And I, wanted to, I wanted to see its creativity. And it said, Smile Makeover 101, The Wonders of Dental Implants, Teeth in a Day, How Dental Implants Can Transform Your Smile, Say Goodbye to Dentures and Hello to Dental Implants, Implant Your Way to a Beautiful Smile with Born a Family Dental, Get Your Bite Back, The Amazing Benefits of Dental Implants. So it kind of throws in some creativity into there as well. And then I said, write this post as a social media caption. I wanted it to summarize it and shorten it. And it created a whole social media caption and it even include hashtags at the bottom. Um, it can also even include emojis. I've seen it create, put little emojis all throughout it, which we know catch people's eye in social media. So incredible what it can do very, very quickly. Now I'm gonna show you a whole bunch of examples and I want you to know, I, we don't suggest that you just copy and paste this information. Um, ChatGPT is getting better at understanding the tones of how you write. You can actually put in, you can insert a bunch of examples of things that you have written in the past and the tone that you write things in, and it will actually mimic the tone that you write in into all your new writing as well. So it's getting a lot better at that. But we recommend you still use this as a starting point. Go in and edit it. Make sure there's not a false information in there. Sometimes they do. They throw in what they call hallucinations, which aren't is, is false information that are thrown in. Um, you need to make sure everything's correct. You can add your tone to it. But how much easier is this to start with this rather than just sitting down with a blank piece of paper or blank screen and try to create your own content? I, you know, I love Sheila's example of creating uh, targeting messaging to, you know, after you use Pearl's um, software to be able to find out your patients from examining the x-rays that need certain treatments. Um, after you do that, you can create a bunch of blog posts about the services that they need. And then you can even create a targeted email to those patients using ChatGPT that links to these blog posts that you do to try to inform them, let's say about periodontal disease, or um, dental implants, you know, you probably don't want to tell them specifically, hey, we were looking at your x-rays or we missed something in your x-rays, right? That wouldn't be the right approach to an email. But is if you can target someone that needs a, a treatment with the information that you create using um, this technology, they may click onto your blog post, learn more and schedule an appointment. So I love that approach of targeting uh, certain people through email. Um, so funny enough, I was I was talking with a company we were interested in, in using, and I had spoken to a salesperson. And um, after I spoke to him, he sent me an email back, and his email was very very well written. Okay, um, and and from to the untrained eye, they probably wouldn't understand that he used some chat GPT, some AI technology in it. 
But because I understand this stuff, I realized this guy's this guy doesn't write this well. There's got to be something behind this. So I actually sent him an email back and I said, um, you know, not to be critical or anything, but I I kind of know your email was perfect. You have to be using some type of AI technology. And he came back and he said, yeah, I'm using a software called Lavender. And this is not a promotion for Lavender. I'm not getting paid or anything. I just found their um, their video on their YouTube channel. And I just want to show you the capability of what these companies are doing with email marketing. Most sales emails like this one aren't very good. They're too long, generic, are full of cliches, buzzwords, and use robotic, fluffy, overly complex, and self-serving language. So even when they don't end up in the spam folder, recipients ignore and delete them. That's where Lavender comes in. Combining AI and data from what has and hasn't worked in millions of sales emails, Lavender gives you recommendations on how to level up your email, providing suggestions on how to improve your email's length, tone, formality, complexity, and subject line, highlighting cliches and words that are likely to send your email to the spam folder, even suggesting alternatives for more concise language and less complex words. The personalization assistant enables you to make your emails less generic quickly, finding relevant information about your recipient that you can include in your email. Once your email has been sent, Lavender will track your email opens and replies in the dashboard, enabling you to track you or your team's progress over time, identify areas of improvement, and places where you can double down. Does it work? Absolutely. Lavender users on average double their reply rate, leading to more meetings, more opportunities, and more closed sales. Lavender, write better emails faster. So again, I'm not endorsing Lavender, but I just want to show you that, you know, you're, when you get emails from marketers and they're throwing in things about your, your city or little custom things, this is what they're using. They're using this type of technology and it's, and it's effective uh, in many ways. Another way to use AI is um, by creating content to optimize your, your Google business profile. Um, we know that when it comes to trust and people, when people are looking for a local business, they trust the places section, which is your Google business profile where it can show up. Um, and we call this the, the Google Maps three pack. We wanna try to show up in the three pack, the very first page, and because this three pack gets the most clicks. Well, Google says in order to rank higher, you need to complete your business profile, your Google business profile. Um, they say that a lot more people are more likely to click and choose companies that have completed their Google business profile. Well, I have seen that most dentists have not completed their Google business profile. You haven't added all the information that you need to give Google so that, that it can rank you better. Um, if you're an admin over your page and you search the name of your practice, it will give you some admin settings on the first page. And these are all the different admin settings. Well, a few things in your settings that you need to update are your description. Um, you can use ChatGPT to help you write a description for your practice. There's a services section where you should add all of the services you provide, and each service actually has an area you can write a description for each service. Again, you could use AI to create these custom descriptions for every single service that you offer. Um, they have a section of Q&A or FAQs, and you could even ask ChatGBT, what are some of the common questions that people ask dental practices or orthodontic practices and add those to some that you hear? There's even a section in the Google business profile where you can do blog, like blog posts, like posting to social media. And Google loves this because all the content that you put inside of Google is, um, is searched by, I mean, Google can use that information and see the keywords and help you rank better. So the more information you can put in Google, the better. And AI can help you do this. The next, uh, um, advantage of using AI is, is you can use it to respond to your reviews. So in your Google business profile, you can click on read reviews. And my hope is that you respond to every single one of your reviews, positive or negative. Uh, you should get a notification every time someone leaves you a review. It's just common courtesy to respond to reviews. But even better than that, Google crawls the words in your response and the words in the review. So if someone mentions dental implants, teeth whitening, whatever it might be, if someone's searching dental implants near me and someone has written that in a review or you've responded with that word, 
you can show up higher in the results. So I wanted to show you a way I just, I found a negative review on orthodontist uh, Google business profile. And I wanted to show you how you could use ChatGPT to respond to a review. So here's a negative review, one star. <laughs> and I just went to ChatGPT and I said, you're an orthodontic practice that just received the following negative review. And I copied and pasted that review right into ChatGPT. I said, respond to this review in a professional and kind way, letting the person know that we value their opinion and apologize for their negative experience. Within seconds, it wrote this full response. We sincerely appreciate you taking the time to share your thoughts about your experience at our orthodontic practice. We are truly sorry to hear that, you're, that your journey with us has not met your expectations, that you've been left feeling frustrated and disappointed. We understand the concerns you've raised regarding the progress of your daughter's treatment, the timing of adjustments, the overall communication experience. We want you to know that your feedback is invaluable to us as it helps us identify areas for improvement and work toward providing better services to our patients. And it continues to go through, it's actually fairly long, but it addressed every concern that was in that negative review, specifically address every concern. Now, I looked at this and I thought, ah, this might feel a little too long. So I told ChatGPT, Chat I said, shorten the response to about 100 words while still addressing their concerns. And it quickly shortened it to 100 words. <laughs> so again, I wouldn't recommend just copying and pasting this, but it's a great starting point. It's hard to respond in, in a kind way um, and professional way, but this helps so much to do that. Another way is social media ideas and captions. Um, I put this into chat GPT. I'm the social media manager of a dental practice. Give me 10 short form TikTok ideas for the month of September that highlight the unique benefits of my office. And quickly, I was given 10 ideas that I could do for a short form video. And I then I said, apply these ideas to three current TikTok trends. Now, we know there's new trends every day on social media, new creative things that are happening. And so it took all those ideas and it gave me three trends that were happening and how I can apply these to dentistry. <laughs> so tell me without telling me show your routine. Um, I saw one of these ideas was to show your morning oral hygiene routine. Um, it says create a catchy routine set to music where you go through the steps of an ideal morning oral health care routine, demonstrating the importance of a healthy smile. So you could look at that. You can say, hey, that's a great idea. That seems pretty simple. And then you can create a little video like this. I brush my teeth. Yes, sir. I spit it out. I go, mm, mm. and then I lean forward. I pause. I tell myself, hmm, pretty. <laughs> so there's so many ideas out there. Sometimes it's hard to come up with one, and that helps you do that. Captions. Writing captions is tough. If you've ever sat down to write a caption for a social media post, um, we have a, a publishing tool that helps dental practices create captions, and we have a whole library of content and ideas and graphics that they can use. Well, we've built something into it called Caption AI. And Caption AI works just like ChatGPT, where you can say, write a caption about the benefits of dental implants, and it will give you a few options, include the hashtags, include the, um, the emojis. You can pick one, you can edit it, and you can simply post it that easy and that fast. Images. So these three images, I want you to look at these and tell me which one you think was created by AI. It's actually a trick question. All three of these images were created by AI. These are not photographs. These are not real people. These are AI generated images. The image, the way that um, AI can create images now is blows my mind every time I, I see what it can do. There's a software called Midjourney that you may have heard of. Um, again, you can create a free account with Midjourney and start messing with it. And basically what you can do is you can put in a prompt. You can say something like extreme close-up of a woman smiling, perfect teeth, dark skin tone, cinematic lighting, high resolution. And within seconds, you can see how it's generating this image. It'll give you four different options. And it'll give you four images. And then you can... You can modify them, you can perfect them, you can make them bigger, you can 
download them, and you can use those for your social media accounts. We've messed around with this quite a bit, and you can tell different tones and different styles and different, you can say, you know, make it in the style of Picasso or any artist that you want. And you know, we did a claymation style one here on the right. We did a painting style one here on the right, on, sorry, on the left and right. We did put a walrus in a dental chair and a Pixar style walrus. We did a, a detailed uh, dinosaur in the dental chair. Now you can see if you look closely, there's still some kind of weird things happening in there. Um, but it's AI trying to figure out what a dental office looks like. And it's just getting better and better as more information is put into it. Here's dental chairs in different settings. It's kind of fun. Here's some cartoons we made with different celebrities in the dental office. If you want to see what we're doing with this, if we're having some fun uh, with AI art, we've created a little Instagram account called Dental AI Art. You can scan this and follow us and just we're messing around with it and, and, and seeing what it can do. Uh, we're also adding a lot of these images into our publisher, our social media publisher and uh, for access to our clients that they can use uh, some of these fun images we're making. A lot of times I get a question with these images, what is cop what's happening with the copyright laws around all of this? Um, we created a whole blog post about the copyright laws of AI and you can scan this and learn a little bit more. Uh, sometimes I get that question, so I just wanted to address it. But uh, basically it's pretty loose right now. The lawyers around the world are trying to figure out what to do with all of this. <laughs> um, but basically it comes down to um, you, you can't currently copyright AI generated content. Um, it's, this might change, but the way to, they're saying to maybe protect, if you want to try to copyright things in the future, it's going to be based on the prompt that you give these programs. So if you have a really complex prompt, that's really, really creative, you know, versus, so this one here on the left is a really simple prompt and it created that image. This one here on the right is a very complex prompt. Uh, you may be able to copyright things if you have more creative and complex prompts. So that's that's kind of the, the gist of it. The last couple of things I just wanna show and then we'll wrap it up. I know we're, we're at the hour. It's just how AI is helping with audio and video content. And the first video I just wanna show is what AI is gonna be able to do with your voice. Hey, what's up guys? I'm KBHD here and this is maybe the wildest new feature I've ever seen added to the iPhone. Ah, uh, okay. So inside of the accessibility settings of the new iOS 17, under speech, there's something called personal voice. They didn't even really talk about this at the keynote, but it uses recordings of your actual voice to stitch together a synthesized voice to sound like you and say anything. There's actually a whole process you have to go through where it gives you like 15 minutes of text prompts that you say out loud into the mic. Then it processes everything on your phone overnight and you wake up the next day with a new personalized voice where you can type to speak. All right, so this is what it sounds like to speak on my voice. I really think 30 frames per second is the correct frame rate. Anyone who says otherwise is clearly faking it. It's, it sounds pretty good. It clearly is a little bit robotic still. It kind of sounds like talking to someone on the phone with like a poor connection, you know? But still, in 15 minutes to have a voice that can do anything is pretty crazy. <laughs> So your voice is going to be able to be mimicked. If you don't like to be in front of the camera or you don't like to be on a call or whatever, you could, <laughs> you know, who knows where this is going to go. But with marketing content, you could probably create videos of yourself with your voice without even being in the video, um, which is pretty crazy. Uh, this is a cool example using AI uh, with video. So it looks like a drone is going through this house, giving a tour of this house. But this is actually just a series of photos of the interior of this house that are put together using AI to generate this animation. And when I saw this, I immediately thought this would be a great way that a dental practice can show a tour of their office, right? Again, technology is not quite there where it's probably super easy for you to do this, but eventually you will be able to create video content fairly easy uh, using some of these tools. Um, this is the last thing I just want to show this, someone attempted to make a commercial and this is kind of a funny, uh, 
you know, they put some humor in it, but this is, this commercial is completely made using just AI, just chat GPT, the voice is AI, the video, the photos, everything is created with AI and prepare you. It's a little scary. <laughs> Are you ready for best pizza of life? Bring friends down to pepperoni hug spot. Our chefs make pizza with heart and special touch cheese, pepperoni, vegetable, and more secret things. Need delivery? Pizzas come fast. Knock knock, who's there? Pizza magic. Eat pepperoni hug spot pizza. Your tummy say thank you, your mouth say, mmm. -hmm. Pepperoni hug spot. It's like family, but with more cheese. <laughs> so I like to show you this because we aren't completely there yet and and i like this little comic this is by tom fishburne he said consumers want communication that is human empathetic and real so hopefully our ai can learn to generate content like that for them right um we can't put all of our eggs in the ai basket you know maybe never we need to understand our consumer we need to understand our target target audience we need to create empathetic real human connections with them um, AI really is just here to help us and make our lives a little bit easier and, um, you know, make us more efficient by using it. So with that, that's my presentation. I mentioned um, we'd love to have a little lunch and learn with your team um, to kind of give you a consultation, a custom consultation of maybe where we can help you out because, um, course you can't just use ai for everything you sometimes just need a human to help you with some of these marketing challenges we'd love to figure out how we can help you um, here's that qr code again to download that pearl marketing kit if you want to scan that one and then i will leave it on this uh, just for a minute this is are both of our offers the one from pearl and our offer as well if you want to scan and take advantage of these okay Again, we're a little over time, but um, for those that want to stick around and hear some of the answers uh, to our questions, uh, Sheila, do you want to, do, can you see the, the questions there? Sure. Yep. I'm happy to answer those. So um, the first question is, what happens when the bite wing has overlap? It's a great question. We get that all the time. Um, of course, the better the diagnostics, the better uh, the AI. Um, however, I will tell you upon reviewing multiple images over time with working with thousands of practices, it does find incipient lesions when it's overlapped. A lot of times I know that um, in the past, it would be like, well, let's wait six months and we'll take it again. It's not a high carry patient. Or the other alternative is let's go ahead and x-ray that patient again. Um, you will see that AI does pick up interproximal lesions. But again, of course, the better the tool and the diagnostics um, of the radiograph, the better the AI will perform. Um, can it read a Panorex? Yes. So um, we are actually approved in multiple countries, I believe over 90 now um, in Europe and across other parts of the world that we are using um, all kinds of different pathologies, periapical radiolucencies, caries and such on Panorex machines, and also undergoing the FDA approval to move forward with that in the US. Um, can AI read a CBCT? Yes, that is also coming and on our roadmap for the future. Um, that is an important endeavor that Pearl is looking into very diligently right now. And as a radiologist specialist, how can I take full advantage of Pearl with my radiology center? And my answer would be that there's always um, two aspects there. It's a great way to have a second set of eyes, whether you're reporting findings, talking with patients, um, and just using AI as just that separate tool to be able to evaluate those pathologies with an unbiased opinion. So I hope that's helpful. I don't know if anybody has any additional questions. Oh, there's two more, sorry. Um, for that's for you, Blake, for targeted oh, yeah. marketing. <laughs> for targeted marketing, can root canals be that specific need that AI could target? Um, I'm, I'm sure Pearl can can um, see that, right? If there's someone that may need a root canal, is that something yeah. that you can? So yeah, definitely. Um, you could go to ChatGPT and start creating some blog content, unless you want to write your own from scratch. 
and um, generate that list and target your patients that need that and inform them of some things they should be looking for, maybe um, you know, give them some information and some good calls to action in those posts so that they can call you directly and um, realize that that's something that they, that they might need. Yeah. Uh, um, next one, how is SEO content viewed that is written by AI? Is it a pro or a con? That's a great question, and we get this uh, quite a bit. So um, Google is starting to recognize <laughs> completely AI-generated content from ChatGPT. And if you if you read enough ChatGPT content, um, like I had mentioned with that email, I could kind of decipher that this was written by AI. And there's a tone, sometimes you can just, there's a cadence and a tone that you can kind of read and, and, and feel that this is from chat GPT. Um, but if you go in and you edit it and change some things around, it, it helps that, it, that it can't be deciphered as well. And it will not penalize you. You know, I, I don't think Google is currently penalizing content because of it, but it can recognize. And so my suggestion again, would be to go in, edit it, um, you can actually put it into like a, there's different sites where you can copy and paste into like a plagiarism. Um, it's called like a plagiarism checker. Not that ChatGPT content is plagiarism, but um, it will give you a percentage of how much it, it could be copied. And you could probably do that. I think there's even a, a site now that checks how how much is detected that this is AI content. So try to change it as much as you can so that it's... Um, it's more custom to you. And then uh, Brent said, just wanted to say this was a fantastic webinar. Thanks, Brent. Very nice job. Thank you. Thanks so much. Well, we hope everybody enjoyed the webinar. I don't think there's, a oh, let's see. Oh, here's another, there's another one from Brent. Do you see that, uh, Sheila? Let's see here. How is AI? Let's see, according to the literature. Oh. According to the literature, for caries detection, intraoral is between 45 to 53% accurate. How is AI increasing these numbers? That's a great question. So um, like I discussed earlier, we have the ability with AI to detect incipient lesions much sooner than the human eye. So I think that would actually be really helpful in understanding the accuracy. Also, the data that's predicting the areas of decay is trained on thousands of dentists instead of our own just regular opinion. So I hope that answers your question. Right, and last one here, um, uh, Muhammad is asking how to use AI to generate leads on social media posts. Um, you know, I think you probably have to take that question one step back of just how to create leads using social media. That's probably, um, you know, it takes a lot of creativity. It takes a lot of, um, you know, using specific hashtags to reach the right people in your local area. Um, we know social media is is becoming a lot more video based. They favor um, short form videos. So I would say if you could just use AI to help you come up with better, more creative ideas, um, you can ask it to help you generate hashtags for your local area that may be popular hashtags. I always encourage practices every time you post to use hashtags that are specific to your local area. It'll help you get found more and AI can help you do that. Um, but I think another big thing is just consistent posting. Um, and that's the hardest part for most dental practices is to consistently post to social media because again, like I mentioned, time, ability, and it just can help you do that so much easier and so much faster. And so that will definitely get you more exposure and hopefully more leads to your to your practice. So hopefully that helps a little bit. Okay, I think that's all. Great engagement and interaction. Thank you so much, everybody. Please reach out to us directly. Um, this webinar is being recorded. So we'll send that out to all the registrants and the attendees um, after the fact. So if you wanna watch this again, you can do that. All right. Thanks, Sheila, for joining us tonight. Yes, and thank you for having me.
Yeah. And thank you, Pearl, for, for um, our great partnership. And um, we will hopefully speak again soon. Sounds great. Thank you, everybody. All right. Thanks. We'll see you.